Hello, I'm Enzo, and today I'll be playing Azure Lane, and this is my strategy to beat the new Extreme Challenge mode. This battle also has intel, just like meta battles. Basically, if you've ever played the Borderlands 2 Valentine's DLC with the bride and groom boss, this is similar to that, where if you don't kill both of them at the same time, they regenerate. But only one regenerates at a time. So you get one low, you kill them, and the other one still has lots of health, while the low one goes to a position and regenerates. It's a little bit annoying, but it can be avoided with my fleet loadout. This is pretty much my standard heavy armored enemy loadout. We also have submarines, but they literally do nothing. And you'll see that in the damage numbers, but they are literally useless. So use whoever you want, except for Royal Fortune. She does nothing against heavy armor. This battle is also unique in the fact that you can use Meowficers. Now, I don't really go over them because like, I don't think they provide that much use. Occasionally, like Lime and Atena are good for uh, battleships, but I pretty much just went for the more damage and, you know, just carrier buffs, submarine buffs. Now, I'll go over other characters you can choose, but I chose Plymouth mostly because of her three main gun base. And she's also pretty tanky for a light cruiser. And of course, her more flagship damage. The damage speech manuscript also gives her some luck, hit, and evasion, so it's a good thing to have. Especially considering she doesn't have a fate simulation, meaning she has no luck. Shimakaze, this is my standard loadout. The new awesome ultra rare destroyer gun, and celestial body for some extra HP. You could also use Gold Burn for some extra reload on Shimikaze, but it is way better on Anchorage. Kazaguma's gear is similar to Shimikaze's, but she has the Beaver Squad tag, which gives your fleet 20% more movement speed, which I think is insanely useful. So I put it on her, mostly because Kazagumo is all utility, not really damage. And on the topic of utility, the reason I have her in my fleet is because of her awesome air raid assistance. Onto the main fleet, we have Implaceable. Implaceable is required for this loadout, and I'll tell you guys later, but she's insanely useful. You can also use Tiger Cats or any other fighter on her, really, considering armor-piercing rockets aren't good against heavy armor, despite their name. Besides that standard aircraft carrier loadout, it's just a shame she can't equip a torpedo bomber in her first slot, but I guess she can in her second slot. But the Tenrai is infinitely better than the Ryusei, so we're keeping the Tenrai. If you saw my Queen Elizabeth meta video, you'll know Shinano and Hakuryu's loadout are the exact same. So, not much to say here. Standard aircraft carrier setup. I've kept the Ryuseis on them mostly just because they're amazing against heavy armor. I'd go with the German fighter if you're going against medium armor. Yeah, but how often are you going against medium armor? I mean, I thought I'd show Hakuryu anyways, but no explanation needed here. On to the battle now. Okay, so there's some things you need to know. Washington starts out with 100 bars of HP, but South Dakota starts out with 140. What does this mean? We need to focus South Dakota first. How do you do that? Well, there's a reason I said Implaceable is literally required for this. I guess you could use Arc Royale as well, but there's why. It's because you can slow them down. Why is this so important? Well, you can slow down the one in front, all the torpedo bombers will hit the one in the front, and boom, you've now singled one of the two characters out, and you can lower them one by one until you're ready to launch an all-out attack and, you know, hopefully sink both of them at once, or you're just going to be suffering. But yeah, that's pretty much the strategy. Dodging is kind of important here. You will take damage over time, you know, you can't dodge every single thing, but these ships are oddly tanky. Like, I thought you'd take way more damage from this challenge, but this challenge is way more about endurance than anything else. Like, can you beat this? You know, it gives you 10 minutes to do it, so I sure hope so if you're a late game player. I mean, I literally don't have much to say. I wait for one to get in the front, launch my airstrikes, Implaceables will always launch first because she has a very low reload time. And yeah, all your torpedo bombers hit them. They're heavy armor, so take more damage from torpedoes. Now the numbers vary, but you can usually take about 20% health out per airstrike. It really depends. 
Now, every so often I do rotate between focusing South Dakota and Washington. It's a little annoying how many projectiles are on screen, so it can be difficult to see which one is which, but Washington has silver hair, South Dakota has black hair. That's pretty much the easiest way to tell them apart, even though they're on fire and have so many effects going on them at once. It can be hard to tell, but it is possible. I mean, there's not much more to say, so I'll fast forward to the end. Near the end, I was being way more careful about how I used my airstrikes as to not accidentally sink one of them, which would mean they would regenerate and I would just suffer. So I do actually lose Plymouth, you know, they can't stay alive forever. I could have put a repair toolkit on her that would help quite a bit, or potentially pearl tears, but as you can see I'm being way more careful with how I use my airstrikes now. And my final plan was to save up a bunch of airstrikes so I could launch them all at once and hopefully sink both of them. Now I don't remember how I did it in my other run that I beat this in, but this is a little dicey let's just say. I was scared for a second I'd have to redo the recording because I failed, however Implaceable just barely carries us. And boom, we've beaten them. Uh, with the worst time. Who knew? Okay, it's fine. I beat them. I got it for the recording. This is how I managed to beat South Dakota and Washington. Also, like I was saying earlier, the submarines were literally useless. Y'all know why U-37 is so powerful? Because she has the ultra-rare torpedoes on her. That's the only reason she did so much damage. Alright, so here's another clip I decided to do of easy mode. So they're both level 110, this is extremely easy, but I was thinking on one of my first attempts, why not use Bismarck's Y, Zway, however you pronounce it. Well, because this happens. Her singularity pulls them in together. Now normally you'd think that's a good thing, you can hit them easier, especially with battleships. However, this completely ruins the strategy I used for the last run. And yeah, you can't pick them off one by one which means they will regenerate one by one. Now, technically they can only regenerate three times. I believe it's like 60% health, then 40%, then 20%. But you know, in a perfect world, you don't have them regenerate once. So yeah, there's why I didn't use Bismarck's Y or any other battleships. At first I thought battleships would be better, but you know, carriers are always better against heavy armor. Well, Maybe except for Musashi, but then you have Musashi in your fleet, and you're not taking full advantage of Kazaguma or other carrier skills. It's still a real shame there are no ships that like make battleships deal more damage. That's all I want is a vanguard ship that makes battleships deal more damage. Although, this run does actually have a good ending. Even though this is not by any means an optimized fleet, I do actually manage to beat them. And my original time was like 3 minutes and something, so getting a 150 was amazing here. Now I'm sure there's some tryhard in the world that has, you know, like, a few seconds time, or, you know, obviously not that crazy, but a very low time. Everyone's gonna try hard to get the best time in the world. I just wanted to make a video showing how to beat these bosses. I am by no means a good player on this game. You may think so, I'm just a knowledgeable player. I can beat these levels, not efficiently. But some players might be screaming, where's Helena? Why not use Helena? Where's her radar scan? It's the most broken skill in the game. Well, it has to do with carrier timing. Helena doesn't time well with carriers, and it's not easy to time her well with carriers. The other issue is, her radar scan is only a percentage chance which means sometimes they'll go off, sometimes not. Meaning, you know, most characters are better than her for this. Along the lines of Plymouth of Kazagumo, Sirius is another good character I would choose for this. Now, she's not that tanky, so you'd have to put some good gear on her. But yet again, Mark of Sirius is one of the best skills for carriers in this game. 
mostly just because she has a consistent 10% more aviation buff. Also, if you're crazy enough, I guess you could use Ting An or Kashino. Ting An preferably because she has 10%. I think Kashino's aviation is like 8%, I guess, if you really wanted. Now, my thoughts on submarines is since the wolf pack, this meta fleet wasn't that great. I was thinking you could use I-19, Leonardo da Vinci, or U-556 meta, considering they're probably the best, you know, non-wolf pack submarines in the game. At least in my opinion. Actually, U-47 would be good here because of her battleship skill as well. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed, consider leaving a like, maybe even subscribing. Anyways, this is going to be Enzo from Look Into Gaming, signing out.